Hello Gems! Welcome to another episode of TR is in Tech. I'm your host, Shelley Benhoff, and today we're going to talk about this year, the Great Resignation, and how I changed my life. I quit my job, I run my own company, it's been completely different. So I thought that I would talk about how I prepared to leave, and then how I started my company, and all of that stuff. So, um, 2020, yeah, it was hard for everyone, I think. And I, as you probably know, if you've listened to any episodes of this, I had a complete mental breakdown. I just, I couldn't concentrate. I was having episodes. I was, um, just going through it, you know? And so I wanted to start a company. I had actually started my company Hofstech in 2015. Um, and I started it in order to provide online training and consulting. Um, so over the years I have produced courses on Pluralsight. I had a course on Udemy at, at one point that is not there anymore. Um, but I, I really wanted to teach people. I wanted to help people, which I, I still am so passionate about. And I'm so glad that this worked out spoilers. Um, but anyway, so I, I started the company and then I proceeded to spend the next four years, um, building it up on the side, you know, so it was my side hustle. So at one point, um, I just, it, it kept growing and growing and I could kind of see, you know, yeah, I can do this. I can really do this. Um, and so I just started to pay off all my debts, um, my, my car, all credit cards, my, Husband and I, um, spent about two years paying everything off, but then at the same time, reducing our expenses so that we could save money. So at the end of last year, we had, um, six months saved at a comfort, comfortable, um, level, you know, so that would be if neither of us had jobs and, you know, no income at all. We were prepared for six months of that. So along with that, I kind of had these um, feelings of like, you know, what happens if I leave? You know, I'm, I'm not satisfied here, but what else is there in life? You know, everybody has a job. Everybody's miserable. They're not, they're not. Okay. Uh, if, if you're miserable at a job, please look for another job. There are jobs out there and it is, really sad to me that I spent such a long time working in a position in a profession that I just didn't like. Um, and so I made a plan and I, I hoped that it would, it would work out. But what really, um, tipped me over into quitting was that s someone at plural site actually said one thing that just, you know, <laughs> nailed it for me. He said, if you fail, you can just get another job. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I needed to hear that, but I definitely did. And it, I, I literally drafted my resignation email that day. And I was like, you know what, if my whole, plural site, online courses, content creator thing doesn't work out, then I can just get another job. It's not like the end of the world. And furthermore, 
if I'm unhappy at one job, why not try just doing something on my own? Again, if I fail, like I'll learn something and then I can just find another job. I know a lot of people who have done this, who have tried and was like, yeah, you know what? Not for me. So, yeah. But um, it turned out it was for me. <laughs> so uh, at the start of this year, when I made that leap. Um, and it was really, really hard to make that leap. It is hard to walk away from stable money. So if you think about it, is your income really stable? Like really, really think about it tomorrow. If the company that you worked for was in trouble financially, would they take care of you? Would they keep you? Would they help you in any way? Because I've worked for 22 employers in my life. And from my perspective, no, they won't. But they will expect you to be loyal AF, like so loyal. If, if you're not loyal in some way, then you're out. So I think that that should show you right there like what you're what you're dealing with at work but honestly if you are unhappy then have a plan b i think for me my largest hurdle in quitting was um what am i going to do with all this you know experience with programming and um, just all of it. I've spent 10 years learning Sitecore and, um, what am I going to do with that? So what I did with that was that I created a learning path for it on Pluralsight. <laughs> so I, I ended up still using my skills, um, but not like every day. So I don't code every day. I, I don't code most days actually, which kind of sucks actually. But anyway, um, so once I, I was over that hurdle and over the fear of uncertainty and all of that, I just, you know, jumped off the cliff two feet at once and flew. And for me personally, this was especially hard because my husband produces all my work. So we had to figure out how to make all of this work for our entire household income. <laughs> so that I hope isn't a struggle that m most of you will have. Um, but it was very very difficult. The largest hurdle, health insurance, you know, um, in the States, your employment is tied to it. And if you don't get health insurance through an employer, and I can't get health insurance through my company because we're not big enough, we don't have enough people. So my husband and I do have to pay out of pocket for health insurance. And it's like $930 a month. But I have asthma, I have anxiety, I'm bipolar, so, you know, I, I don't really have a choice. Like, I really need health insurance. So, but once we um, researched, you know, our monthly expenses and how much of our savings we would use at first, like, we planned to, you know have to use the savings this whole year. And we um, came up with ways to cut costs. The main one was just cooking for ourselves instead of eating out all the time. And the funny thing about that one is I wasn't happy about it at first. But then once I didn't have to work eight hours a day anymore. It's not really that big of a deal to cook a, a couple times a week and 
plan meals and all of that stuff. And I mean, it's, it's helped me lose weight. So, so there's that. And our, our main concern was, um, of course, uncertainty. Our, um, courses on plural site earn us a passive income. So that's great. You know, I've got 13 courses and, um, we were already earning enough to live off of if we had scrimped a lot more actually. But, um, so when I took this leap, I did a lot of financial planning. I made spreadsheets and I used, you know, programs to forecast everything for the next three years. So if we had stayed exactly the same as last year, we were good through the end of uh, June 2022. So seeing that's a great comfort because honestly, ever since I started doing plural site and courses and all of that, my income, my passive income has been very steady. It's, you know, increased and increased at a steady rate. So I thought that that plan was, you know, pessimistic actually, because, um, it in um, previous years, the the increase was steady. And so I also calculated what happens if it increases the same rate next year, which, you know, would be great. Um, and I just went through all of our bills, all of our subscriptions. <laughs> to streaming services. So I no longer subscribe to all streaming services at once. I'll cancel one for a while. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm not using it, then yeah, I'll, I'll cancel it or pause it for a while. And, um, that's helped a little bit, but not like a huge help. So, um, other than financial goals. My other goal with Pluralsight and my company in general was to produce six new courses um, this past year. And then I, I also wanted to try to not consult either. I wanted to see if I could make it with authoring and speaking alone. Um, this was important to me because consulting as a lead developer for many, many years, um, you know, it's, it's hard. I don't see the value in work where I'm assigned bugs or whatever. Like I would rather coach a team. I would rather not sit there and code, you know, to, to fix things all day. I'm just past that. I used to love it. I really, really loved it, but you know, I'm, I've been in the biz for 22 years now. So you grow and you expand. And unfortunately, when that happens, your roles change and you move on which is what happened to me. And then um, other than financial and the courses, no consulting, I also wanted to just focus on wellness. After last year, I knew that I needed this year to be calm. <laughs> I wish. And I wanted to reduce my stress as much as possible because stress you know, it has a physical, um, symptom to it and you can 
not even know that you are completely stressed out until it's too late. And then, you know, for me, it could cause depression or a bipolar meltdown or an episode. And so I just really wanted to ensure that I was taking care of myself. And I also planned to work part time all year instead of working, you know, like the 80, 100 hours a week I was working while I had a full-time job, and I was also doing Pluralsight through my own company on the side. Like, it, wow. When I, when I say things like that out loud, I'm like, what was I thinking? Well, I guess I was thinking that hopefully one day I would be here. <laughs> so... Um, and then I also wanted to, um, increase my presence in the author and speaker space. I wanted to have more speaking opportunities. I wanted to speak to more groups that I hadn't spoke to previously and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's what I hoped for. Let's talk about the results. <laughs> so... Financial goal, met and exceeded, met and exceeded. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, well, it, it was our pessimistic goal was exceeded by a little bit. Our optimistic goal of what it would have been like if we enjoyed the same type of growth that we had previously didn't happen. That was a lot because of COVID because people don't have money anymore and, you know, aren't, aren't spending as much on online training. Um, and so with that, I, I did produce, um, how many courses this year? So this year, we did five courses. Um, two of them were not great. <laughs> two of them didn't really perform um, as much as I had hoped. And the other two did really, really well. And the last one is actually um, not out yet. So that will come out... Um, hopefully in January 2022, I think. Um, so yeah, we almost met the goal there. But I will say one caveat is that one course that we did was like three hours. And I, I worked with a whole bunch of people from all over the world. Um, and so, yeah, it, it took longer, but it was also lucrative, like very lucrative. I love, <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. And I'm really, really proud of that actually, because my husband producing, um, courses for me is, it's an interesting dynamic, you know, we're, partners in life and partners in business. So I wanted to ensure that we, as much as we could, just separated personal and, and business. That's easier said than done. Doesn't always um, work. But I think at this point, because we've done, you know, 13 courses now, we just have this like rhythm and everything's good. And, you know, I, I have all of our projects organized in JIRA and I like send them tickets and we have a Slack channel that's like integrated with JIRA so that all of the ticket statuses are, are sent there as well. And, you know, at some point I should really do a whole, whole thing on how do we do this? What is our production, um, like, uh, schedule or, um, strategy? So it's really organized and honestly, it's, it's just the two of us, but I, I'm a project manager too. So I, I couldn't 
run a company without also implementing proper like leadership and management. And so at this point, like I'm really, really pleased with how we work together with, you know, the quality of our work. I cannot even begin to um, sing my husband's praises on that. His editing is, it's so good. Um, and yeah, he also does like um, animations and stuff. If you have watched any of of my plural site um, courses on leadership, it's it's all a story and it's you know characters and and we we even tie the characters together in each course and they all have like a backstory and, and they all you know just interact with each other and it's um it's really interesting and i i love it i i love teaching leadership because i've been failed so many times and then when i got into management i didn't have a mentor so i didn't know what i was doing so i'm literally like writing these courses because this is what i needed back then um so yeah we exceeded our goals um pretty much i also did no consulting this year zero zip zilch pretty proud of that so i i saw that as a huge win because the only way i've ever made any money ever was writing code for somebody so now i can take that skill and i can transform it into something else so if you are looking at tech as just like specific prescribed tracks right it's not anymore we have all of these tools at our our fingertips on our phones and everything to just create content you could do you know youtube you could stream on twitch you could stream on on facebook or youtube you know there are all of these options for people to use hard skills to make a company out of helping others learn skills which is what i just love about what's happening right now and I have also said no to a lot of things. <laughs> I have had a lot of requests for consulting and they, I don't know, they just didn't seem interesting. And so I was just like, no thanks, no reason, just no. So that was really nice. Um, yes, so then there was my wellness. This has been the best year of my life. It really has. I, I feel free. I feel like this giant weight has been just lifted off of me. I don't wake up every morning feeling the crushing pressure of everything I have to do that day because I don't have to do anything any day. I can do whatever I want. And it's just amazing to me that I never ever thought that I would achieve this. Not in a million years did I think that this year would just go off without a hitch, you know? And it just really did. Everything just kind of fell into place. I'm connected with all the right people. I have this amazing group of mentors. Oh my goodness. I have mentors that anybody would just drool over. I mean, you've seen a lot of them on the show already and they have given me such good advice. And a lot of the time they do it without my even asking. And that's a mentor. And so I started to mentor complete strangers on the internet on twitter i get i get messages 
all the time. I'm, I, I've probably mentored a hundred, a hundred people this year. And I think that what people don't understand is that a mentor isn't a person who's around you like, uh, like all the time. You don't have to be, you know, actively, you know, talking for weeks and it's really just check-ins when someone needs guidance. And it also isn't training. Mentoring is talking about your career. I'm not here to teach you how to code, right? I'm, I'm here to help you find jobs, um, have a resume that will stand out, have a portfolio that looks good. Um, I will connect you to people. Um, but yeah, like I, I hear it so often where people are just like, Oh, I don't have time to mentor. And then I'm just like, why it's, it's literally like a couple emails a couple times a year. If, if that it's, it's honestly for me, like I've, I've only ever reached out to my mentors when I was looking for a job. And so that's pretty, um, usual. What's unusual for me right now is that I am not looking for a job, but other people at Plural Sight recognize what I'm trying to do. And so they've just like said, Hey, awesome. I think you could excel in, in this or try this. And I'm just like, absolutely. I will listen to anything that you have to say. Like, it's, um, it's just amazing how a good mentor will really, really set your career on fire. Like you have no idea. It's, I, I didn't have a mentor at all until I was at least 10 years into my, um, career. And then I, I had a couple, right. But around, 2020, I think, is when I got more active with Plural Sites, you know, community overall on, on Slack and um, Twitter, especially. And people just took notice of that and messaged me to, to help. And it was absolutely amazing. I'm so, so lucky. Um, but one of the things that, um, a number of, of my mentors said was, um, stop trying to make Hofstech a brand. Hofstech is my company. And I was trying on, on Twitter and, um, LinkedIn for years to get followers and all of that stuff. But the thing is, is that that's a company and people don't want a company. When you're an author, you have a personal brand. You won't sell courses. You will sell yourself. And when people like you and they um, relate to you, then they will follow you. And so that just, I... I had been told that before, but I think coming from people who did that, then I just thought about it and I was like, okay. And then one of my friends, um, Jason Alba, he's a plural site author. He asked to put me into his personal branding course. And I was just like, why? <laughs> you know, I don't have a personal brand. And he was just like, you're tiaras. You, you know, I, at that point, I, I had literally done like one or two, um, conference talks wearing my tiara. It just, you know, took off from there. The first conference talk I did wearing my tiara 
Psych Horse Symposium 2020. And the moderator of my session contacted me before um, and said, should I wear a tiara too? <laughs> and my goodness, Jason St. Cyr, if you're listening, that that really was the moment that set off my whole like tiaras branding thing because what happened during that session like while we were there we agreed beforehand not to mention it you know just act like uh, us both wearing tiaras was totally normal <laughs> and it was so um it was it was so funny and so new and and different and i was trying to inject some entertainment in talking about, you know, Sitecore, Helix, web development, and C-sharp, and all of that stuff. So um, while we were doing the session on, on a Slack channel, there was this whole thread of people posting pictures of themselves wearing tiaras, and then also on Twitter, you know, some people were, were doing it there, and I was just like, huh. This is something. This is, I, I have something here, but I didn't know what I had until Jason Alba put me in his course on personal branding. And so after that, you know, um, he championed me to really develop a brand. And that's, that's where this podcast came from. I, I started it um, in, what, October? Well, I, I actually started it probably last February or March, I think. It was um, early in 2021, 20, but this podcasting thing was also, you know, I never had a podcast before. I didn't know how to podcast. But I just, I just try things and, and I see what works and not, you know, and, um, I, I really wanted this podcast to tell my story and inspire people and really celebrate the success of of women in STEM in general, because we all, um, you know, we're not expected to be in STEM. <laughs> so sometimes it's uncomfortable. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, so with that, I also started on TikTok. That has not gone anywhere yet. I don't even have like a hundred followers, but it's fun. <laughs> so I will still try. Um, and then on, on Instagram, I also started a, um, tiaras and tech account. And I don't really know what will happen with that one because overwhelmingly the engagement there are bots because Instagram and, and Facebook. So I guess we'll see, but that's how I've been kind of, um, curating, cultivating my, personal brand this year. Um, and Twitter, you know, I've grown, um, exponentially. So I'm proud of that. I've met tons and tons of people who I actually like have engaged with and I've talked to, and I actually haven't had that many, um, trolls or negative experiences. Feel like the one that sticks out is that I, I got a DM and it was closed still, but, but the summary read, you know, you are sad because you are fat. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm not going to open that, but I did screenshot it and sent it out. And I was like, you know, block this person. Um, but I haven't had too much of that. So I feel like I've really tapped into a good community. I think, um, but I guess we'll see, you know, as stuff grows, when you reach more people, you reach more people. So I guess we'll see for next year. Um, 
I had 10 speaking engagements this year. I only had to apply for one. I was requested for the other nine. And that didn't hit me until recently. And when I, I thought about that, that's, that's powerful. That's really powerful that I, I really only had to apply for one thing that I have enough recognition at this point that people who are strangers to me will reach out and say, Hey, you know, like we need coaching on how to attract and retain top talent. That's my, that's my jam right now because companies are, are, are trying to figure out why are people leaving? And I'm like, I don't know. How are you treating them? <laughs> what, uh, what's their, work schedule? Is it flexible? Is it, you know, remote? Stuff like that. So I have enjoyed that immensely. I'm really looking forward to more of that. So I think my um, main challenge for this year was focusing on the right things. <laughs> I definitely spend too much time on Twitter. Yeah. I really do. But most of it is that I'm, I'm answering people's cries for help. So right now, my focus is on junior developers. I mentor, like I said, a hundred at least. And right now I have resumes of like multiple people that I'm trying to help them connect to companies that I know. And I know a lot of them. Um, and so I, I do spend a good amount of time on that. I'll probably have to pull back on that a little bit next year if I want to produce more content, but I will never stop. I will never stop helping junior devs because I've worked for so many companies that refuse to hire junior devs and all of their reasons are ridiculous. Just like, you know, they're hard to train. They, they don't stay very long. Do you ever think the problem was you? Because I do. <laughs> and I just, um, I know I, I say this a whole lot probably, and maybe it'll become my catchphrase at some point, but I really want to be that person that I needed when I was starting out because it was hard. It was so hard to do it on my own and I was too stubborn and I had too much pride to ask for help. No, no, no. Ask for help because asking for help is a strength. Not asking and struggling and driving yourself crazy is not strong. That's actually weak because you, you want to seem like you know something you don't. No employer wants that, trust me. Um, Cause it's, it's obvious when that happens. It's obvious that you have no idea. And if you have no idea and you're not asking for help, just no, please don't. Just ask for help, help will be provided, hopefully. Um, other challenge this year was not having a schedule. So not having to like log into work at nine and stay active until like six or, or five. Um, that was a struggle because of my mental health issues. People who are bipolar um, generally need like a, a structure. And so I, I had to take it upon myself to make sure that I was, you know, sleeping right, that I wasn't staying up too late and sleeping too late, that I had a balance and that I was sleeping enough, honestly. Um, so yeah, those were really my challenges. And again, I'm so proud of everything that's happened. This year has been 
amazing. And I am just blown away by all of the support that I have. I, I definitely want to say my sister, Jen, um, she handles uh, Hofstech's money because I just, I don't have time for that. I have to, you know, produce content. And she's been with us almost the whole time. I think she joined in 2017. Um, but ever since then, her, me, and my husband, Jason, we are killing it. We are just a great team. We work really well together. We have formed all of our business processes and everything's um, pretty smooth at this point. So for the next year, I am super hopeful that, you know, uh, it'll just continue to grow and we will produce more courses and that I'll stay on this path um, for, you know, more speaking engagements and I, the, the sky's the limit, but I feel nothing but optimism at this point. I don't feel like I have any reason to be afraid that, you know, all of a sudden we won't have an income because that's just not really um, possible with a passive income. So I hope that wherever you are, whatever you do, you're happy. You deserve to be happy every single day. Life is really, really short. And I think that that's a, a very large reason of why people have you know, started this period of the great resignation because people just realize that life is short. You should be happy every single day. Now, I do want to say this episode is the last for 2021. I will be taking a break for a month. We will be back in mid-January with another episode. And until then, please like, subscribe, and share this episode with your fellow gems. I really appreciate all of your support and Happy New Year.